Hey everybody, in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to make a perfectly round orb out of pinch pots, roughly the size of a grapefruit. Now to be successful with this assignment, you're going to need clay, equal parts on both sides, so say roughly the size of a tennis ball. You're going to also need some type of a scoring rib, maybe a smooth one as well. A couple paddles come in very handy, and the slip you just made. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. We're going to start making pinch pots. All right, so we're making some pinch pots. Essentially, we're going to make two pinch pots, two equal halves that are going to be gluing together. I started making these a couple hours ago, so they've stiffened up quite a bit. I want you again to refer to the pinch pot videos you've already seen. Again, I'm going to take a one pound ball of clay, roughly, go ahead and jam my finger or thumb all the way down close to the bottom, I would say about a half inch from the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and spin my thumb in here. You can see it's going to already make a nice equal wall. And then with my three fingers and a thumb, just start pinching. And slowly rotating. You just want to remember to, to never actually have your fingers come close to touching. I like to get the clay out of the bottom early. So right now on the bottom down here, it's a little bit thinner. Then I can move my fingers up ever so slightly and pinch again. Just keep rotating. You can see it's getting a little bit larger. The walls are getting a little bit thinner. Sometimes you have to take your middle fingers and thumbs and kind of squeeze it back in ever so slightly. Most people make the mistake when they're pinch, making pinch pots to they go too far too quick. So it's a good idea to, to go ahead and just let it sit upside down, start the next half. With practice, you get a lot better at this, and you can make pinch pots pretty quickly. Some people even use their left hand when they do it. Some people do it with two hands. At this point, you just want to keep it rotating in the palm of your hand so it doesn't get flat on the bottom, because our object, the objective here is to make a perfectly round orb. I want to get the halves as close to the same width as possible. This one needs to come out a little bit. Now we really need to let this set up. You can see how loose and floppy the clay is at this point. It's almost collapsing under its own weight. So it's best to keep it upside down. The arch form sort of supports its own shape. I'm going to move these aside and break out the ones I made a couple hours ago. You can see this one's considerably stiffer. This is considered more close to a leather hard consistency now. They're roughly the same width. Now what I need to do is sort of flatten the tops to maximize my connection area. And I use my scoring rib to completely obliterate the where I want to connect. Both sides. Go ahead and take some of our nice slip we made earlier and fill up your score marks. Remember, think about the glue. Think of the slip as being the glue that connects these two. You see my score marks are nicely filled up. Now I want to go ahead and press these together. Not only do I want to press them together, but I want to wiggle ever so slightly. And I can feel the particles realigning and grabbing each other. I'm going to take my thumbs and sort of 
work my way around. Now you're going to be working on your orbs much longer than you might think. It's actually quite a difficult thing to do to make a perfectly round orb. Okay, so sometimes there's a little, little bump, a little slot right there. So we want to fill that. You can take a little piece of coil, a little clay, and make a coil. Remember when you're making coils, this long, even pressure from the tips of your fingers to the heel of your hands. And that way it won't get too, too uh, flat. It'll get oblong if you do it wrong. You just need a little tiny coil. And just press it in there, if there's a big gap. And just sort of work it along. Just to fill that up. Okay? Also, what I want you to do is take a little coil and make a ring. You can save this ring for the whole process. Make a little loop. You're going to place your orb on your ring. That way it's not going to get away from you. Now we're going to use a rib and just start blending these together. See that this is nowhere near an orb, right? We want to really make it as round as possible. So this is when you go to the paddles. I like to hold the paddle on an angle and just start hitting the areas in that's where it's obviously um, not round. You can see how this big flat spot right here, I need to go ahead and pad all this in. I'm just holding the paddle at an angle and shaping. The paddle is an amazing shaping tool. It's been used for thousands of years. You can see just by a quick paddling it's already much more orb-like. Now I really like to use one of these ribs that have the teeth on it. And I feel like it's almost like a, a plow. It's taking clay from the high points and putting it into the, the low areas. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm also flexing the metal rib almost to the same shape and then pulling. Now I just glued these two together, so it's actually a good idea to homogenize, let it homogenize, and let the water migrate from the wet areas to the drier areas. So I'm going to go ahead and let this sit for a few moments, maybe anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, and, uh, and then come back to it. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Well, my ore has been homogenizing. It's a little bit drier. Now I really want to start nitpicking the shape itself. You can see little high points and low points. Well, again, I like to flex these, these metal ribs with four fingers and a thumb. It doesn't matter if it has teeth or not, but it seems to do a better job. And just keep rotating. And as you're rotating, you start to see the imperfections. I like to hit the imperfections with the paddle. The stiffer the clay, the harder you can actually hit it. Some people go with a wooden spoon. And I really want you to try to nitpick that form and make it as round as possible. Now it always looks pretty round, but how do you really know? You can always if you really, really want to know, you could always measure, right? These are calipers, measuring devices. You could also use a measuring tape. Measure the side. You can see the tips are touching on both sides. I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. And you can see it's not quite 
making it. So it's about an eighth of an inch wide. I'm gonna just knock one side in about an eighth of an inch. Slightly flatter right there. And they're gonna just hold that paddle on an angle and start working it in. Now we're gonna be decorating these orbs so it's it's not absolutely imperative that it's perfectly round. It's almost crazy to ask you to make something that absolutely perfect. You might run into some situations where you're going to see where's my little, I have a little dent in the side like this. Very, very easy to fix those. I'm going to take a little chunk of clay, really just dip it in my slip, press it in there with my finger, just do a little fill and blend it right in. You can also try the flexible metal rib with, with no teeth. Now since we're making a form with a completely enclosed air bubble, I'm going to want you to poke one hole in there. And I used a, a knife and just sort of spun it in like this. Just the size of a BB or even just a tiny little needle tool hole is going to be completely sufficient. This is going to help it dry. It's going to keep it from potentially popping while it shrinks or during the firing itself. Now you can see this is getting pretty round. We're going to be decorating the outside either through a colored slip or additions. That's going to be a whole separate video, but you can see we're looking pretty round. I definitely could work on this a little bit longer. I see imperfections everywhere, and the closer I get, the more I actually see. So I just keep working. It's just uh, almost an endless, endless battle for form. Very good. I've been looking pretty close to done, so I'm going to go ahead and just think about decorating this now.